So this is going to be an easing into your body practice. And if you'd like to join me, let's begin in Sukhasa. Sitting tall and straight, the front shoulders rolling back, the eyelids closing. And beginning to come into our breath. Lengthening the inhale, lengthening the exhale. The mind flowing into that rhythm. Then lifting the hands and pressing the palms together. Keep the sternum lifting and gently lower the chin. Visualize the brain flowing down the throat, down the neck. To take a new seat behind the heart. From this new space, opening our practice with one arm. Inhale. So crossing the right ankle in front of the left first and placing the feet, the legs on the bolster, coming down. And as you come down, keep moving the buttocks towards the bolster so that the lower back is connecting to your mat. It's not arching up. And you can check the blanket. Our arms are going to go back, so you might want to pull the blanket in or move it back, dependent, making sure that everything feels comfortable. Stretch the arms up. And stretch the arms back. Deep inhalations. Deep exhalations. Keep stretching the arms. But drawing the arm bone into the shoulders. So the stretch has to come from a different place. It's not about overextending the shoulders. It's about drawing the arm bones into the shoulders and stretching the armpits, stretching the triceps, keep the elbows firm. And stretch all the way out to the tips of the fingers. And then lifting the arms back up and releasing with your hands and grip the side edges of the mat. We're going to press into our feet, into our outer ankles and lift the hips up. The front shoulders are rolling back. Try to roll them back, place them back and pump the hips up, pump the shoulder blades up. And then as you come back down, move the buttocks in the sacrum towards the bolster. So the lower back is pressing against the mat. A second time, press and lift. Feel that coiling shape in the upper back, the chest opening. And as you come back down, tilt the pelvis so the sacrum moves towards the bolster. And last and final time, press into the outer ankles, the outer feet. Lift the hips, the buttocks up as high as you can. 
Roll the shoulders back. Press the shoulder blades up. And then exhaling, coming down, tilting, sacrum towards the bolster, and changing the cross of the legs, the cross of the ankles. So press down on the other side. Stretch the arms up. This time, cross the thumbs together. Gives us more traction, the palms facing the sky this time. Re-stretch the arms. See what holding the thumbs brings, how we can stretch even further. And be careful to draw the humerus bone into the shoulder socket so that the shoulder blades can then activate and press up. The armpit chest opening, the rib cage opening. And passiveness in the legs, the hips, the organs. Keep the arms vibrantly stretching back, seeing what they bring to the side ribs, the waist, that broadness, that lengthening. And then lift the arms back up and release. Holding onto the edges of the mat with the hands, rolling the shoulders back, you know what's coming. Ready, press and lift. Reroll the shoulders back, press the shoulder blades up. And as you come down, tilt the pelvis, adjusting. Take a breath. And again, lifting back up. Feel the beautiful opening of the groins, the widening of the pubic bone. And back down, tilting the pelvis. Third and last time. Ready? Lifting up, re-roll your shoulders back and activate those shoulder blades. Press the hips up. Let the groins open. The pubic bone broaden. And then exhale, coming down, tilting the pelvis. And just releasing the legs so the backs of the knees are on the bolster, but the ankles are laying on the crossed. Shoulders relax downwards into the ground, face relaxing, breathing. All right, and continuing. So now the left leg will rest on the bolster, and the right leg is going to come to Padmasana, so we're in Adva Padmasana. And we're bringing this in a little bit closer, maybe change the cross of the arms, so we're going to do it this way. So make sure that the blanket is pretty much at the top of your head, ready to support your forearms. Tilt the pelvis, let this inner groin roll to the outer groin. You want to take the sandbag here, or a bolster, another bolster for some weight. The pubic bone broadening, and lifting the arms up, bending the elbows, taking the arms back. Move the elbow tips back, so you're stretching the arms, you feel the armpits opening and the side rib area broadening, but you're drawing the arm bone into the shoulder sockets and pressing the shoulder blades up.
And then you lift the arms back up. Remember which forearm is close to you. So when we change sides, we'll change forearms. Stretch the arms. And releasing, holding on to the outside edges of the mat, preparing to lift. Inhale. And exhale, lift the hips, roll the shoulders back, press the shoulder blades up, and feel the stretchingness in the groins. And then back down, tilting the pelvis. Inhale. And exhale, lifting back up. And coming back down, adjusting the sacrum towards the bolster. Third and final time, make sure your Padmasana is as high as possible. Inhale. And exhale, press. And then back down. And releasing and extending the legs, integrating that knee opening, and just resting the legs on the bolster, making sure the lower back is feeding again the earth in case it got a little bit separated. Breathing here, repacifying the face. Right, I'm changing sides. So the right leg on the bolster, the left leg, Padmasa. And you can, of course, always just hold the foot if it keeps wanting to slip. If you're able to, bringing the arms up and changing the cross of your arms and back down onto the support of the blanket behind. Now pull with your fingertips the elbows back and bring the arm bone into your shoulder socket. Press the shoulder blades up. Keep making sure that the Padmasana leg, that the groin is rolling from the inner groin to the outer groin. And then bring the arms back up, extending and holding the edges of the mat. Prepare the shoulders a little bit already, the front shoulders rolling back. Inhale and exhale, press and lift. Roll the shoulders back again. Shoulder blades, very important, they press up and they help the hips to press up. The groins are opening. And then exhale, tilting the pelvis. You can even guide the buttocks with your fingers towards the bolster. Take a breath. And then when you're ready, exhaling, lifting back up. Press those arms down. Activate the back body. And back down. Preparing for our last one, inhale. And exhale, press back up. The arms firmly pressing down to better really ignite any part of the back body that you haven't yet gotten to. Press it up. And then exhaling back down, tilting the pelvis. And releasing the leg, extending, integrating the knee opening. And extending. And resting here with the lower back completely flat on the floor. Front shoulders rolling back, the sides of the neck even. Inhale, exhale, and re neutralize. And now, rolling over to the side and 
coming back up and we're going to pull our mats into the wall and get a strap and meet back for a round of Sutta Parabhushasans. So we're going to be lying down with our feet against the wall and the trifolded blanket. I've kept here for anyone who might have shoulder stuff going on. It's nice to have the support for our arms in our Sutta Parabhushasana. So lying down, finding Sutta Parabhushasana and moving the blankets back, the feet lined up, and of course the sacrum, the buttocks moving towards the heels. All of that tilting of the pelvis. All right, the strap, oh my gosh, this is the long one, so I have to find, there we go. A loop in the strap, and here we go. Placing the loop on the foot. Hold the strap between your thumb and index finger, like that, and then just close, and slide the hands down, and the blanket will be there if you need it. If you don't like it, you can move it, of course. Now grip the legs, so they're not just straight, but they're actually gripped. Your feet electric as well. Breathing in the space. Breathing from the space. See if the leg can come a little bit closer. Releasing the leg and coming back to Sutta Tarasan. Even though we want to rush to the left leg, taking a moment to centralize, to feel the intelligence of the back body, to align that which has maybe fallen or feels higher or lower than the other. And then taking the strap on the left foot, straighten the legs. Firm them. Hold the strap between the thumb, the webbing of the hand, right here, the thumb and the index, and slide the hands down, finding the blanket. As you stretch the arms, of course, drawing the arm bones into the shoulders and pressing the shoulder blades up. So that even though we think this pose is about the legs, it's the whole body and the upper back has to do its work that we ignited in the last few poses, has to do it even here. Grip the legs and draw the leg even closer. Releasing and taking the strap off and back into Sutra Tarasa. Roll the shoulders back, feel the shoulder blades pressing up equally, evenly. And make sure you're pressing into your heels and pulling the buttocks towards the heels, stabilizing the lumbar. And now, lateral Sutra Parangasa. Right leg lifting. Loop on, and the strap underneath the upper back, from the right to the left, pulling. Now make sure the roots of the thighs are firm, the muscles gripping, and draw the right leg towards you and across, towards you and across, and as you do so, keep pulling the strap. So the left arm is stretched and opening, bringing broadness to the chest. Keep the left heel firm. Grip the outside edge of that right thigh up and in. So it's supporting the opening of the right groin. 
Keep gripping it up, the outside edge of the right thigh, grip it up. And then bring the leg back up. And removing the strap, Sutta Tadasana. Move your buttocks towards your heels. Lower back, feeling the support of the earth. And now the left leg lifting. Leg up, firm legs. The strap coming from the left side to the right side, underneath the shoulder blades. And the right arm pulling as it feeds. Regrip the roots of the thighs and draw the leg towards you and to the left. Towards you and to the left. Keep gripping the roots of the thighs. And keep the right arm stretched and straight and strong so that through that action the chest is broadening. Paying attention in particular to the outside edge of that left thigh which tends to drop, but it's essential that we grip and lift so that the inner groin is supported, is held in that opening. And then bring the leg back up and removing the strap. Sutta Tadasana. Now at this point, we may have travelled a little bit from the left or the right side of the mat. So just lift your head, check that you're still in the centre. Move the sacrum towards the buttocks and feel the back body. So moving away from this constant reference point of the front body, really feel your back body so that our intelligence becomes centralised and then decentralised with awareness. So as we pay attention to the back of the body, and as we paid attention to the front of the body, the focus starts to decentralize, and intelligence is now everywhere, simultaneously. Now, from that state of noticing that Simultaneously, simultaneous web of intelligence everywhere that's come to your Padivritva Sutta Anushtasana. So the loop on the right foot and the strap coming from the left to the right underneath the shoulder blades, the right arm pulling. Grip those legs and pull the toes down, push through the balls of the feet. The foot against the wall is firm. As you bring the leg towards you and across, pull any extra of the strap with the right arm to so the right hand and arm have a purpose, because once we've settled ourselves, we'll be twisting to the right. Now let this right hip come up. So often I see people resisting, like they think the hip has to stay down. No, lift that back hip up and allow the leg to swing over. Keep lifting it up, swinging the leg over, grip the roots of the thighs. And now we're going to twist. So from the belly button, inhale. And exhale, twist to the right and pull with your right hand on the strap as you twist. That's it. And again, inhale. And exhale, twist from the belly button and pull with the right hand on the strap as you twist. Grip the roots of the thighs. Push through the feet. And be alive everywhere. And then bring the leg back up, releasing, moving the strap. And Sukhadadasa, I'm checking for the little travelings that we do from pose to pose. And with the breath, re decentralize. Feel the back body, feel the front body, feel all of that. Adjust as needed. And now, Parivarita Sukhadadasa. On the left hand side. 
So the strap goes from the right to the left, underneath the shoulder blades, and the left hand is actively pulling it. Straighten the legs, there's always a dynamic bend here. Straighten them, grip the thighs, and draw the leg towards us and across, towards us and across, towards us and across. Now don't resist with this hip. Let it lift up, and the leg comes across even more. Rip the roots of those thighs, push through the feet. And now begins the twistingness from the belly button. Inhale and exhale, twist to the left and activate the left arm to help pull you into the twist. Make each breath mean something. Follow the journey of that breath, what it reveals. And then bring the leg back up and exhale, releasing, moving the strap. And one last time, Sukhatarasana, check that you're in the middle, check that your buttocks are still moving towards the heels. If they're not, push them in that direction and feel the contact of lower back with earth. Front shoulders rolling back. Inhale, exhale. Decentralized awareness. And now bending the knees. And we're just going to do a little roll, bring the feet back and back down to the ground. So we're gripping onto the edges of our mat as we've been doing in some of today's class. And rolling up, push into the hands and the arms to lift the legs over. Don't resist the back of the head. It's so common. You start pushing the back head, keep the chin coming towards the chest, press into the arms. Breathing. And now we're going to roll out. So with control, rolling out, bending the knees, spread the feet apart, turn the toes in, and rest the knees against each other. Make sure the lower back is completely flush on the earth. And again, so ready, bring the legs up, the arms are firm, Holding the mat, pressing down, and roll over. See if you can roll your shoulders back. Keep pressing the arms down to help you to lift the back ribs up. And preparing to unroll. Spreading the feet, the knees resting against each other, which helps to ensure that the lower back really gets that restingness. Feeling that presence in that action and all that it brings. And now last and final roll. So once again, grip the sides of the mat, bring the feet in, and push into the arms to roll over and up. See if you can open your shoulders a little bit. 
and see if you could release the mat and put the hands on your back, pressing the back up to the sky, pressing the hips a little bit closer towards the face, Keep ensuring that you're letting your chin come to the chest. And try to have a regular smooth breath. And then if your hands are on your back, release them back down, hold onto the mat. We're going to unroll now. So slowly unrolling. The knees bending, spread the feet apart, turn the toes and the heels out, rest the inner knees against each other. Shoulders open. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. And let us now roll it over to the right hand side and push ourselves back out. And we're now going to take a nice little light Shavasana in Viparita Kavani. So we'll use our Shavasana as an inversion as well. So we'll want a bolster, a blanket, a block, and maybe a strap. If your feet tend to slip, then you might want to have a strap around the feet. So let's get that stuff and meet back here. This is the setup. We've got the block sandwiched between the bolster. We have this blanket, not like this, but this way. And that's just giving us a little bit of lift and so maybe a little bit less impact from the bolster, a little bit kinder and softer on the lower back. And then we have the strap, just in case. So coming in sideways, so that we can get as close to the wall as possible. Now, when you come in, don't worry if you're not actually touching the block, because as long as you're as close as possible, the body, that whole tail and sacrum area, feels the block, even if it doesn't feel it. <laughs> And so, as you rest in your pose, it will know that it's there and it will gradually descend towards it. So scoot in as much as you can. You can hold the sides of the mat, scoot in further. And then this is where you decide if you like to have a strap. If you feel that your feet, which we're gonna have the legs well open and relaxed, if you feel that they're slipping, then you wanna take this loop of the strap, make a wider loop. And I guess it would just be easiest if we all did it. There we go. It's a little bit too small actually. When you have width to the feet, you bring width to the groins and to the pubic bones. And when you have that support, it actually can allow the areas that are still holding on to relax more profoundly because they feel supported. We open up in situations and experiences of being met, being supported. So the same goes for the body. Roll the shoulders back and extend the arms. The palms open to the sky, the palms are linked to the lungs. So if you're closing the palms a little bit, even though you feel that your chest is open, a part of it is less open than it could be. So really make sure the little fingers are going towards the thumbs, rolling the whole arm. Settle the neck, the head, so that the sides of the neck feel even. Feel the shoulder blades, even here, being encouraged to press up. And feel the abdomen relaxing towards the lower back, the lower back relaxing towards its supports. 
the legs rolling open a little bit more as they also relax more profoundly and then the eyelids closing.
Now keeping the eyelids closed, just bending the knees so that the feet slide down the wall. And putting the soles of the feet against the wall, pushing ourselves back one hip at a time, off the bolster, moving backwards. And then just crossing the ankles on the bolster, making sure the lower back is feeling the ground again. And then changing the cross of the ankles, the feet back onto the bolster, and with an exhale, make sure the lower back is completely resting on the blanket. And now, uncrossing the ankles. And we're rolling over onto the right hand side, taking the fetal position, supporting the outer right skull with the right hand. And then as we feel ready to sit up, we're using the hands to come to sit. And the bolster is right there, taking a final seat. And then lifting the hands, pressing the palms together. Loka Samasta Sukino Babandu Om Shanti 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 And then releasing the hands And finally the eyelids opening but still in that state of decentralized intelligence, feeling the back body, the front body, the side bodies, seeing and feeling aware in all directions, to the sky, to the earth. And welcome back. Our practice is complete and we are fully awake and energized for the rest of our day, of our evening. Thank you for practicing with me. Take care. Namaste.